Fiona Meakin and I am an artist and illustrator. Today I am bringing you my workshop on butterflies and moths and how to draw them. I can't wait to get started so come along and join me. So as always I'm going to get to, to start off by doing our warm up. So today we're going to be warming up by using some of the shapes that we're going to be using to create the body of the moths and butterflies. So I often get people to start by just drawing out with circles. Circles are the foundation to lots of pictures. Um, if you're drawing bodies they're often the foundation to build up those body shapes. So that's your first shape to draw. The next to draw is more of a squared off circle so, or a, a rounded square. So just get used to drawing these and just let your pencil flow really. Also sometimes if you're feeling a bit stuck um, and you haven't drawn for a while I really recommend just having a squiggle and a scribble on the paper. It really helps you just to free up because it can be quite a worry sometimes just to make a mark on the piece of the paper as it is. Okay, the next shape we're going to do is more of an oval shape. You could do it sort of it's almost like a carrot shape if you wanted to, or you could just do a plain oval shape. You can do it more sketchy if, if that's the way you like to work. More loosely, as with any of these shapes, be more loosely. It really doesn't matter, this is about applying your style and your way of drawing to breaking down the shape really. The next shape we're going to do is a triangle. A triangle that way, maybe one this way. Just be really loose and free with these and actually as you can see they're almost starting to look like a butterfly as we go. So then I want you to try just joining the shapes together. Okay, and then try doing the same but rounding off the edges. It's like the infinity symbol, but you've also already started to draw a shape like a butterfly. And then you can do the same, you can add some smaller wings, or hind wings, which is the technical term here. So you've almost, almost got like a bow. So if you think about your butterfly as a bow, it becomes transformational, you can transform it into a different shape already. But for today we're not doing them as bows, we're doing them as butterflies. So that's just a little warm up to get you started. Well done for drawing your warm ups, now we're going to start by drawing a moth to start off with. So we're going to take the circle that we did in the warm-up I'm just going to place it in the middle of the page and then we're going to add the rounded square to the bottom of the circle here. Already it's starting to look like a body, a head and a torso. Okay, and then we're going to add our oval shape which you sort of see, you tend to see on insects like bees as well they have this longer, elongated abdomen and today we're going to put some lines on it. I'm working with um, a B pencil today um, and I just find that's really nice, it makes a really soft drawing. You might want to sort of make the edges a bit more looser and a bit more jagged just to give you this sense of the butterfly having almost like a furry body. Okay, there we go, so we're already starting, we're getting going with our body here and then we're going to add the little eyes onto the side. If you look closely on the drawing I've done here, you can see the eyes and when you get really close up to them, they have a lot of character. They have this long, I don't know the technical name, but they have this long nose-like um, proboscis, is that the word? I think it's a proboscis, where they can um, get the nectar out of the flowers. So we're going to add that on here, just like a little line. And then we're going to add 
Just be really carefree with your strokes here, just to add the antennas on. Okay, it doesn't have to be even either side. Where it does have to be even though, and this is the secret and the key to drawing moths or butterflies, is to make everything symmetrical on the wings. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the forewing, which is the first wing, and on the moth, we're going to have the wings coming downwards. Okay, so we're going to take the forewing around, and it's going to go all the way back up to the shoulder here. And we're going to try to do the same on the other side. Don't worry if it's not exactly the same. We're going to try and get as near to it as we can. It's symmetrical. And then we're going to bring a line down from the centre for the hind wings. Here we go. And again, you might want to use a slightly lighter pencil, so a HB pencil here. We're going to make it look a bit furry because moths tend to have that slightly more furry look to them. Okay, there we go. And then, as I said, making it symmetrical, we're going to add patterns to the side. So I'm going to just add like a almost like a circle to this side. And I'm going to make it look like it's got eyes. So it's kind of a camouflaged in nature, but it also could be fooling its prey that it is actually a much larger insect or creature. Therefore, um, Scaring off its prey, I guess. And again, try to do pretty much exactly the same thing as you're doing on the other side. That's not quite mirrored. A good tip, though, is to, if you're struggling to mirror it, you could get an actual mirror, put it halfway between the body, and you could um, sketch it out that way, just to have it, to give a sense of what it would look like on the other side. That's a little bit, a little bit more symmetrical. So we're going to add some eyes to this side as well. So there we go. This is what we're going for here. We're going for this this kind of shape of moth. Okay. Brilliant. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to our butterfly. So. Again, we're going to use the same principle and we're going to take the body shape, which by now, do it with a slightly darker pen, by now you'll have the uh, hang on. So it's just a few shapes, one, two, three, a proboscis, the antennae, and then the little eye is going around the edge here, which gives it a real lot of character. And then on the abdomen, you can give it some um, some little lines as well. But we're going to make it look like it's flying. Instead of the moth which was um, maybe resting on a leaf or something, we're going to give this big wings. We're going to just go simply like the bows I showed you in the warm-up. As you get more confident, you'll be able to maybe make them um, more wiggly. And again, just try to make it symmetrical. If you can't, don't worry. Now you can put some patterns inside the wings now. And this is where the artistic license comes in. So you're more than welcome, obviously, to research um, a specific species of butterfly. But you could make your own up. And that's where the fun lies, I think, in, is in making your own up. Remembering all the time to just be symmetrical. So what you do on one side you do on the other. There we go. So to colour them in, you could use crayons, you could use um, pencil crayons. I really like to use um, these markers, which are called Pro Markers. So don't worry if you don't have these, you could use felt tip pens. But these are really lovely because they um, are, basically are like painting with watercolour, but they dry in seconds. So I think what we'll do today is we'll colour this one in 
using the blue. Now this is quite a nice technique where you don't actually draw all the way to the end. You use strokes to pull it outwards so you can leave a nice white gap. And it just adds to the realistic nature of the butterfly you're trying to draw. Don't worry if you go onto the body a little bit because we can shade that in to cover it over. Or you could use a darker pen or some watercolour paint if you wanted to use watercolour paint instead. I think I'm going to go for purple on the outside for this one. And I think the colouring in section is always really quite relaxing and quite mindful. It's, I always find it quite like meditation. Having said that, it can be quite frustrating to colour in when you're trying, when you've got a really fiddly job. It can put your stomach in nuts sometimes because you just want it to be done. But it's always worth it. Once it's done, it always looks really, really good. And it just looks like it's finished off. So you're getting the sense of how our butterfly is building up. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just to have the even spread. As nature intends butterflies to be. And butterflies are amazing, aren't they? Because they really stand for the transformation. They start off as caterpillars, which I haven't drawn today. But I think I might do insects for one of my weekly workshops. They start out as caterpillars, and caterpillars can't ever envisage what they're going to become and what they're going to turn into. And they have these amazing transformations where they grow their wings and become fully fledged. I'm going to go for a slightly lighter purple. I don't know if there's much difference. Let's go for a little bit, just a little bit of variation. It might not show up. You see how the pen glides onto the paper so nicely. And there's lots of different types of brush pens available, so it's just about finding the one you like best, really. They tend to have a thick end and a thin end, so I'm just using the thinner end today because it's um, a lot less... Um, it's, it's more fiddly. If you wanted to colour in a big vast expanse of paper then the thicker end is better but because it's quite delicate doing a wing then we're going to colour with the pen and the smaller end there we go I'm going to go I'm going to tackle the body with a pencil crayon instead just because it gives it a bit more texture And it allows those nice pencil marks to show underneath as well. But this is just this is just rough. You could always go over it with a darker pen if you wanted to. Wonderful. I'm going to knit back to the moth now. And I'm just going to show you how I would create um, some texture on the moth. I'm not going to do all the wings, but I'm going to take a soft peach colour as a base. So you'll see what I'm doing here by using a light marker. It gives a nice base to then pencil crayon on top of without having the white of the paper coming up underneath. But you could use loads of different materials to colour in your butterfly. You could use um, acrylic paints or watercolours. You could even use collage if you wanted to. And if you don't have any of those things, then crayons or pencil crayons are perfectly fine even just shading it with pencil. So I'm going to take two light colours here. I'm going to use um, that's a soft peach and a pastel pink for the hind wing. I'm 
just can you see it gives slightly two different tones and then I'm going to choose two different tones do you know what let's just go for it let's just do the whole of them the whole of the wing I think it'll look really nice if we just do it all so just to do it a bit faster I'm using the thicker end of the pen the double-ended pen I am left-handed, so I am realising that I'm covering the picture as I go along. But never mind, you get to see it when I move my hand. So again, we've got the two different tones of pinks for the base layer of our moth. You could take your time with this. You don't have to rush it like I am. And then... I'm going to take a brown colour and we're just going to go over the top really lightly. Mm -hmm. Picked a bit more of a reddy brown. Actually, that one was a bit dark. And you can just shade. Shade how you shade best, really. I quite like to do a crosshatch technique so you go one way and then you go the other way and it just gives you some depth to the drawing and I'm going to go for more of um, a yellow ochre on top of the hind wing so it will just stand out because it's a different shade of brown underneath And you could just go on layering up, really, with the different colours and finding lots of different tones and contrasting tones as well, just to pick out features. We might go for... Yeah, the pretend eye as a sort of shaded colour of brown as well. It's quite relaxing listening to the sound of the colouring in as well. Can get lost in it really. Let yourself get lost in your drawing. There we go. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a close-up. We're going to do a close-up and a side view. Next we're going to look at how to put the body together to make the shape of the moth. As you can see from the pictures I've done, um, moths and butterflies are obviously very similar, but they have varying di differences in the colour of their wings. So moths tend to be darker colours, not always, but often butterflies are much brighter. And the moths are a little bit more hairy and a little bit maybe of a darker muted colour. Okay, so now let's go a little bit closer up and have a look at a close-up of the moth and butterfly's face. I think this is my favourite bit, actually. So we're going to take our circle that we did at the beginning. It's really lightly this time, though, and it could be a bit bigger if you want to. Imagine you're getting really up close and personal, and you're um, maybe the size of your butterfly or moth, and you can see them really, really clearly. So we've got a circle to start off with. And then we're simply going to add two half moons, really onto the side as if you were drawing a fly and then we're going to use for its proboscis we're going to take a big sweeping shape almost like a J, a back to front J and we're going to add it to another smaller one to give that sense of having like a straw attached to its face because essentially that's what it is. I think it sort of sucks up any nutrients from the flowers with its proboscis. And then we're going to add our carefree lines, just really quick lines to the top for the antennae. And then the best bit for this, for me, is the shading. We're going to shade it, 
but we're always going to stop a little bit close to the top just so you've got sort of the shine in its eye it just makes it look a little bit more realistic here you could colour it all in if you want to but I just think it makes it look a little bit more real it looks like the light's shining off it gives it a bit more of a 3D look ok there we go so you've got your close up of the face now you could make it look cute if you didn't want to do big eyes you could maybe do some smaller cartoony eyes Absolutely up to you with that. And then we're going to just, from the side, we're just going to add its wing on here. And a little wing here as well. And we're going to do the same to the other side. There we go. We're going to imagine its body is behind it on here. But that just gives you a sense of what it looks like to have a close-up of the face. Finally, we're going to do a side view of a butterfly. So you could do this either as a butterfly or a moth, and that depends on how you colour it in. Um, if you want it to be a butterfly, you'd go for brighter colours. But for the side of the moth, you're going to take the body shape like you have done already, but you're just going to pop it onto its side. Instead of having it going downwards, it's going to go to the side here. Okay, and then its abdomen is going to sort of be just be any size really but it's just going to come slightly down pointing downwards I'm going to go for its eyes being on the side of its head again like this and we're going to go for the antennae just carefree sweeps of our pencil then from the top of the um, torso we're going to do two legs and on the abdomen we're going to do two legs coming off that way as well looks a little bit like a shrimp actually and then we're going to add our wings. So like we did at the start, we're going to take our bow-like shapes, pull it all the way across and over, and then another one across and over to meet with the abdomen. Okay, so that's fine. That's fair enough. You could just leave it as that. You could have it on a leaf if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to be really fancy, you could add a bit of a 3D element so you could have the second wing coming up behind it like this okay and then you can give it a go with shading or patterns so I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of a pattern onto here a bit of a wiggly pattern I'm going to put its other wing behind us there and now what you could do here is take two shades so I might go for the orange colour sort of the soft peach colour again I'll just show you how to do this. So we've coloured it in with soft peach here. Using the thicker end to just speed and it's quicker. But if you don't have these sorts of pens, please don't worry. Just use whatever you've got to hand. Then what you could do to make it look like this one is in the background and a bit darker, so the light's not getting to it quite so much, is to use a darker orange colour which just gives it some depth and shading and a bit of a 3D element as well So I use um, a fine liner here. You could outline it if you want to, but absolutely you don't have to. It depends what kind of impact you want to have, whether you want to go for muted colours or you want it to stand out in a more graphic way. 
I do quite like to add a line round, especially for the eye because it gives it a real sense of that beady eye sticking out the side of its head. And it can always help it to stand out, you know, on the leaf as well. There you go, I hope you've enjoyed seeing a few different ways of drawing moths and butterflies. I hope you enjoyed today's workshop. I hope you enjoyed drawing moths and butterflies and I will see you all again soon for another one. Bye!